Cool. So it's working as uh, an okay distance. Are we happy with this? Um, I'm, my name's Dan. Uh, I, was, I run this with Brendan. He sort of did all of the work here. Uh, pretty much, thanks very much to Zendesk for hosting us. That's really cool. Thanks for the beer. Engineering food, you wouldn't be able to do this without it. Um, so I run a little design studio called Mala. I run a little design studio called Mala where we make uh, mobile apps. Um, I've had a really good year. I've been able to work with some really cool people. Um, Mala is a phonetic on Play-Doh, so it's like a creative thing. It's plasticine. It's like Marla. If you're thinking like Marla Scullia, you are incorrect. No points. Ten points from Gryffindor. Um, so yeah, I've been able to work with some cool people. Tapadu, open it, open back. It's been a really good year so far. I only started off doing this in April. I've been doing Android for two years before that. Um, so this is, was going to be a presentation about Pokemon Go, but now I think it's sort of a post-mortem. These flash in the pan things, you know, it was the big thing like a week ago now. Anyone still play it? I don't think anyone still plays it. No one. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, when it was a big thing a week ago, um, I used to play it with my friends and we were like, it was great crack and stuff, but there was a lot of frustrations with the app. like. Um, I like give you all would have come across them who crashes all the time. The UI patterns are all over the place. Uh, it's like it was fun and addictive, but it was, it was quite frustrating. One of the most frustrating things I found was uh, trying to find actual Pokemon, especially after the uh, tree step problem came in. So like initially we had this where we could see them. They had these steps that indicated like 100 meters or something like that. But uh, they broke that and it was always like 300 meters or it could be anywhere. And in the case of uh, xenomorphs, they could be in the room with us right now, man. You don't know. <laughs> and so I wanted to see if there was any way to uh, fix this, to find out what data is being sent to the Pokemon app and maybe display it in a way that uh, I could make use of. So uh, there's the first thing you do when you start off with something like this is, has somebody done this already? Because that would be cool. Um, and some people had done some of the work already. So some people had uh, found that certificate pinning wasn't being done properly. So we could man in the middle of it. We could get like the, the plain text of the response objects being sent. And somebody managed to uh, map them out. They're using protocol buffers. I don't know if anyone came across that. It's like Google's, X Google's XML, uh, JSON sort of thing. It's, their description is that like it's a platform neutral, extensible mechanism for serializing structured data. Apparently, it, like it. it is smaller when you're sending it all over the internet and it uh, gives you like nice builders and stuff you can do it with Python, Java, all this sort of cool stuff. But somebody managed to get the protocol buffers for uh, Pokemon. So like this is an example of the play object. So you get like, it, it's pretty cool. You have like things like uh, strictly typed, uh, strictly typed variables and stuff. You have optional fixed, all this cool stuff. They've like, they're referencing other protobufs from it. It's mental. Um, but somebody did all the work and figured out where they all come from. Um, then, so somebody got their response objects and then somebody else from this cool slide, well, this one like managed to actually get into uh, the login uh, process and figure out how to actually get in. So once we're in, what we want to do is actually uh, get the Pokemon and display it in a way that makes it sort of easy to catch them. So uh, some cool guys put together like a little Python map that was sort of making like a really basic square around your initial location and uh, putting it onto a Google map. But uh, it was really, really basic and there's a lot of uh, glitches with it. Um, like, don't get me wrong, it's, it's awesome. Like, automatically now I'm a Pokemon master, I can find anything I want. But uh, some problems with it are things like uh, after about 20 minutes, it goes to an exponential and it stops finding Pokemon in the middle. Uh, each response takes like 300 milliseconds and eventually like you're, when you've moved out to searching about here, all the Pokemon here start to expire. So there's, uh, there's problems with that. But uh, once I went out with my mates with this uh, map on our phone and we started catching Pokemon and we swore that we'd never tell people that we drove around in a car catching Pokemon in the middle of the night. Uh, oops. Uh, but like we were posting all that stuff to Facebook and like we got home and I had all these likes and comments and can you do one for Malahai, can you do one for town, can you do one for my granny's flat in the north and stuff. There's people all looking for it everywhere. I went, uh, I wonder what this would look like in like New York or somewhere that's more central. Uh, so I made one for Central Park and it was crazy. Like there's Dragonite, Snorlaxes, there's all the big Pokemon and I went, well, I wonder if people want to use this. So I posted it into a, a New York uh, group and 
that happened. <laughs> so I got like 200,000 views in like five days. And um, where it starts to dip down is when other people started to come into sort of the, the realm of making Pokemon maps and apps. But uh, initially, like, I was getting messages from people at six in the morning in New York that had climbed over Central Park's gates and we were like wandering around. <laughs> so, um, it, 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 like, I had to make a decision here where I was going to try and fix up the project, which was in tatters, or if I was going to just try and deal with the problems and try and roll it out to people. And like you can see, it took like three days for people to start catching up with us. So I just had to make a decision to just instance up and get this shit everywhere. So uh, I had about 25 instances on Heroku of uh, Japan, San Fran, New York. <laughs> it's all over the place. Some of the names get worse than that. Um, and I was able to just iframe them into my uh, website. So I generated loads of like organic, well, somewhat organic traffic onto the website. And I was getting all these Google searches and stuff. So it's cool. And like, if you go Pokemon Dublin, I come up now. So that's pretty cool. So it was good until then. But then, as in all things, things must come to an end. And there was a cloud ban of all, uh, there was a carpet ban of all cloud IPs. Uh, AWS, Heroku, Azure, nobody uses Azure, but uh, some of the big cloud companies went down. We can say that the ban hammer was dropped. And it was dropped. The ban hammer was dropped. And so in the, in the words of Bain, it's time to go mobile. <laughs> it's time to take uh, this app out of the web area and bring it mobile. So that's sort of, it's my jam. You know, we're at an Android meetup. It's where I move fast. It's where I'm interested in. There's loads of features for the web version that I wanted to implement, but uh, it's not really where I, it's not my wheelhouse. But for mobile, you know, like if you wanted to find Pokemon, you're already using the app. I wanted to be able to go, okay, well, I've just got a push notification that there's a Charizard nearby. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to filter. I want to be able to have like maybe something that uses their APIs for the watch because they've got that mental wearable thing. Um, th there's loads of uh, cool stuff that I can do once I bring up mobile. But uh, the it going down was more of a blessing, really, because I was on call, essentially, for five days where I was getting all these messages at like four in the morning going like, the Pokemon servers are down, why can't I find Pokemon? I'm like, it's not me, it's them, it's them. And uh, it, was, it was rough. And I was like, like, why does it keep going down? It's not like I'm DDoSing them from like 25 instances on Heroku. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and here's a little idea of what the app looks like. So I initially called it like Pokemon Go map, but uh, for some reason, they took that down. Um, uh, <laughs> I called it a few other things. I took that down as well. Uh, here's a, it, like there's the M permissions, and then it just starts scanning. There's a really nice visualization of the algorithm there. So I'm making like a, I'm, I start in a, the middle point, and I move up to the left, and I do a lot of overlapping concentric rings, and add a map marker with like a 500 millisecond. Uh, uh, opacity sort of thing to it. Uh, the banner was supposed, the AdMob banner was down here and the anchor, uh, the fab was anchored to it. That's why it's up there in the corner. Uh, I think Brendan gave it to me about that. Was it you? Somebody did. It was pretty bad. Uh, you can search through the search box. You can like long press somewhere to change your location. But in a, in a world where uh, you need to have like a lat long and a mat and a user, to uh, like set up a Pokemon instance, this was like groundbreaking. Being able to move about and actually like scan where you are rather than in fixed points of uh, interest, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so the benefits of going mobile here anyway was that I was able to get more detailed analytics. You know, what version of Android are you on? Uh, what phones are you using? You know, uh, I was able to get like finally get AdMob because I was using the, the I, I applied for AdSense and it got back to me like two days ago. <laughs> so that's 200,000 visitors I missed out on. Thanks, guys. Um, but AdMob is one of these real, like, come on in, anyone, 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 please use AdMob. Um, IAPs as well, I was going to put in some to get rid of the banner ads and stuff. Um, and the distribution network from uh, Play Store, like the amount of people that just search for Pokemon and then I quickly come up because I rank like highly with those keywords. Uh, and then all the cool libraries you can use, uh, Orex and Eventpost and all that sort of stuff. Challenges were the review process. Uh, like, this really shouldn't have been on the App Store, so trying to trick people into putting it on the App Store was, uh, <laughs> that was a big part of my job. Um, so, like, I'd guess, I think some guy called Peter or something just kept saying yes, but everyone else kept saying no. So I put up, like, uh, I'd uh, be like, fixing problem with interstitial it took me like three days to uh, get it up because people kept just going nah, you should probably change the copyright oh, you should probably take down that screenshot you should probably this i just kept reapplying the same update but eventually he caved 
<laughs> uh, so yeah, some of the libraries that I used were like Orex, Java, Ventbus, Butterknife, uh, this Grover's Pokemon Go API. It's sort of like the API that was being used for the Python web version, but uh, for Java, it's really well maintained by like five core developers, good lads, uh, and crash analytics and answers were really handy for just seeing how many people were using the app and like what explosions were happening, though I couldn't get updates through to the app store, so it was just sort of like watching a, a sinking ship and just being like, goodbye. <laughs> and yeah, I used MVP uh, after like the first iteration and I did that sort of like a screen or feature level, so it's just like face of a view, implementing a view, I didn't really get into this too much too much in this slide, so I'm just going to go to the next one. Um, the way I initially approached it was uh, using sort of like a, I did, they, they didn't have an asynchronous library initially, so we need, I needed to wrap it in a thread, keep it off the main thread, all that async task sort of stuff. So the way I did it initially, just because I did all of this work at four in the morning, because <laughs> I had all my client work to do during the day and all that real life problems that you get. Um, so it was just like a loader extending a thread and just communicating back to the main thread just using a vent bus. So it was handy, but it felt hacky as shit. Um, so the library guys wound up moving it to Orex, so they started uh, producing observables that I could uh, subscribe to, and that made it much easier, and I didn't have to do any of this madness anymore, subscribe and then subscribe in the main thread, and it was just much cleaner. But this is how it looked initially, and I'm... Not too proud of it. <laughs> uh, some of the data I got from it is pretty cool. Like the number of users that were using M is mad, like 50%. It's crazy. Um, and even like 16 users on uh, N. I wonder if that was the release candidate. Uh, it must be. <laughs> I wonder. Um, yeah, and then seeing like the number of users in like United States, for instance, like Indonesia and Ireland, like there is a really strange distribution of users. And I think. At this time, it was a lot of people in Indonesia using it because they hadn't released it in like Brazil and a few places in Asia. So they were just sort of using it to see like what Pokemon were nearby, even though they didn't have the apps themselves. Uh, and then just to see some like the um, the number of searches I was just getting from being on the App Store. Like I got like 7,000 searches just from the App Store. So I wasn't promoting. I wasn't using AdMob or anything to actually promote it myself. I was just using that for money. Um, and like. 40% of all the people that searched installed it, so that's pretty great to be able to get that from like a lot of play, pe other people would have been distributing to using like a release on GitHub or something, and then you have to market yourself. You need to try and find a way to get it to people yourself. So like at one stage, I had a daily users of like 1,800, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, I had like five days in the sun before uh, they caught up with me. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, why am I giving this presentation? I want to be a catching Pokemon. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, guys. So if you have any questions. You mentioned money. Money. Uh, I did not do well. Okay. Like 20 euro. Uh, I initially was spam bombing people on Skype, being like, this is probably going to start costing on Heroku in like two hours. Would somebody uh, throw me up some money? Got like 100 euro from that just from people uh, paying for the servers. I think the Heroku bill came to about 15 euro in the end because it got cut just before I went over the free tier. I was like, thank God. I had no idea what I was going to do when I got to that point. <laughs> yeah, it just burned it to the ground. So what's happening with you now? It's, just like it's pretty much dead because like they, uh, they blocked all cloud APIs, so you can't do any of the nice web stuff anymore. And they've put, uh, if you make a response, if you make a request more than like three in like one second, they'll rate limit you for like 30 minutes. So uh, you have to, I think actually it was initially 300 milliseconds between requests and they put it up to like 20 seconds or something like that for, yeah, they have uh, on their headers, they have something that shows like your lat long and like your UUIDs. That's what it's supposed to be coming from their app. And they weren't initially uh, actually checking if that was legit. I think they are now, and anything coming from like a non-legit source that does one more than every 300 milliseconds gets rate limited. So like where you saw that, those blue dots going really quickly is now. It's lower than that, 20 seconds, you know, like it sucks. Anyone else? Pokemon. Some Android. Cool. Well, thanks very much, guys. <laughs>